Priority guy getting all the buzz, isn't it? Today, Senator Jim DeMint creating more of it by announcing that he is backing the conservative New York congressional candidate, Doug Hoffman. Senator DeMint joins me right now. So, Senator, you know the age-old argument, um, and, and this is something Newt Gingrich has said. You could support Doug Hoffman all you want. He's not going to win. You're going to divide the Republican vote. Uh, Ms. Gazzafaba, the Republican candidate, is going to lose as a result, and the Democrat just walks in. What do you say? <laughs> well, the political labels mean less and less to me, Neil, and I think to the American people, Republican, Democrat, or liberal, or moderate. I think people are looking more and more at what we believe, what the principles are that we stand on, and, and how we vote. And I think the people in New York and New Jersey are showing through these polls that if they have a good alternative, I mean, they believe in the principles of freedom just as much as the people in, in South Carolina and other states do, too. And, and I don't really... I don't get excited about someone else coming to Congress, regardless of the party, if they don't really believe in any principles that are going to uh, focus on constitutional government, limited government, and individual freedom. So Doug Hoffman is one who's just, he's not a politician, he's a business person, he knows how jobs are created. We need more people like him in Congress. You know, Senator, do you ever remember a time in your political life where, uh, you know, a relatively obscure race in upstate New York? is getting national attention by potentially national candidates. I mean, many have mentioned you as presidential timber and Sarah Palin as presidential timber and Tim Bellany of Minnesota presidential timber, and you're all weighing in on this race. Why? Yeah. Well, people, people are really tired of politics as usual, Neil. I think you are, I know I am, and I'm in the middle of it. But the, the, the anxiety, the fear, the, the anger is growing all across our country at what Congress has been doing with the, the spending, the debt, the takeovers, and people are tired of it. And, and I think you're seeing that in these races, and it would be really exciting if the people of New York just put party aside and voted for the per freedom and prosperity in New York as well as in America. I think Doug Hoffman's the guy, and I'm excited the people of New York are starting to see the same thing. Um, what they're also seeing is very little progress on, on health care reform, a lot of closed doors on health care reform. We've mentioned here that we've had 11 straight days now of doors closed on Capitol Hill, largely Harry Reid's door. Um, yeah. Now, Harry Reid, as you know, said yesterday, you know, look, you know, my door is essentially always open for Republicans and folks like Senator Minner, anyone else who wants to talk health care. Uh, John Boehner, the House Minority Leader, dismissed that yesterday saying that that's not really the case. What, what, what do you say? Well, the, the doors have never been open for anything except what type of government-run plan are we going to develop. Uh, Neil, you should know that the plan is finished here in the Senate, but we can't see it. The American people can't see it. They've sent it to the Congressional Budget Office to find out how much it's going to cost. I'm sure they'll be browbeating those guys until they come up with the right number. But well, we're wait a minute. Senator DeMint, De you can't. You know these guys well. They like you. You're well-respected. You couldn't knock on that door and say, hey, I know you guys merged these two Senate bills. Um, I'd like to see the draft. Do you mind? I can't imagine yeah. them turning you down. I'm sending a letter today with, along with 30 other senators asking for a copy of that Send bill. Send a letter. So You're in the building. You're right in the building. Hop over there. We know, where the, we know the door. We know his office. Knock on it. Say you're delivering I pizza. Wish you I wish it were that easy, Neil, but they don't want us to see this bill, and they don't want Americans to see it either, uh, not until they can put some kind of spin on it. Uh, but the thing that's important now is for us to know is they're going to have some procedural vote in the next week or two that they say is not the real bill. But when we pass that procedure to move this yeah. bill to the floor, we've passed the final bill, and Americans need to know that. You know what's weird about this, Senator? I mean, you have to send a letter to folks in the same building, essentially. John Boehner was telling me when he meets with Nancy Pelosi. It's sort of like a meet and greet, very, you know, terse, cursory sort of exchange of what's going on. Right. How's the weather, that kind of deal. And I'm just well, thinking, not, this, is, this is weird. This is wacky. They're not going to show us the bill unless there's public pressure, and that's why we send the letter. We send the letter to, to Senator Reid, and then we send it to all the media to let them know that the bill is there. We just can't see it. All right. Well, it'll be a thick bill, I'm sure. Senator, always good seeing you. Thank you very much. Thanks, Neil. Well, forget Virginia, New Jersey. Look at the.